that they will uh, will start at 5:30 with that group. And don't ask me how many we have because right now I don't know. We'll see. Last year we had 19 all together, but uh, that was last year. Uh, things have changed even this year in March, so I don't know what or what to expect. But that's uh, the plans for confirmation starting this month, and the. Confirmation, the junior class starts on Wednesday, September 16th. So it's not this coming week, it'll be the week after. We have an adult Bible study, uh, planning on doing Experiencing God. And we will start that on the 17th, that's a Thursday at 10 o'clock in the morning. And then another one will be Sunday evening on September 20th at 6.30 here at the church, Experiencing God. That'd be like two different uh, adult groups. And then on Thursday uh, mornings, well, actually kind of lunch with the bunch, from noon until one o'clock, beginning September 17th, I'll lead, a, I'll lead a Bible study on the book of Revelation for those of you that can make it at that time. So uh, that's kind of what's being planned upcoming. Remind you also that the annual church business meeting is going to be on Sunday, October 4th. So I uh, keep that in mind. If you got any questions about that, call chart. She'll give you all the details that I don't have. And anybody that has any updates on their reports, get those sent in ASAP. Or Charlie's going to come to your house. <laughs> but that's all the announcements I'm going to make. I mean, there's other number of prayer requests we find in our bulletin here today. Just mention Walt. Oh, we got a hand over here and a hand there. Go over to the um, My dad's funeral, he had one yesterday down in Texas, okay. and that was the formal church service. Okay. Um, we're having a service in Gilbert this Saturday as well. In Gilbert. And that will be a more informal celebration of life kind of thing. Okay. Where's, I, where's I Gilbert at, Terry? Where's, where's Gilbert? North Bay. All right, you guys know Iowa? <laughs> Find Gilbert. Where's the name? It's at 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. This is coming Saturday. This is coming Saturday. All right. Thank you. I could speak, but I really didn't speak about Thursday. Uh, Patty Sturm is not here, but it is uh, the upcoming event that Next Life Foundation will have their benefit at. Uh, is that Thursday? Yeah, at Golf Point. And it's a big place, so I think we would have. A Plenty of room for social distancing to be coming okay. up too. Remember, uh, Next Life Foundation and um, mm -hmm. the, the, their um, big fundraiser every year. Yeah. Very important. And, and Patty, and, yeah, and Patty Griffiths is the, what do they call her? Founder. The founder. The founder. founder. Of this mission in Tanzania. Yeah. yeah. Thursday, 10 o'clock at Gulf Point State Park no. Lodge. Not what time? 6 6 30. Are you sure? Between 6 and 6.30, right. we can go shop. Yeah. 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 Anytime. There's a lot of bulletin board that gives the times. All right. Yeah. You got, got any questions, just call the church office and talk to Charlie. And Dean is cooking, so you know what we're in for. And I'm help serving too, and so is my wife and others. Yeah, we'll be served. There'll be, there'll be a, a good pork supper there for you. All right, super duper. Okay, I'll uh, just uh, cut it off there because uh, it's time to just focus in on worshiping the Lord today. Thank those of you that are viewing us online or at Zooming or video or listening device, whatever it is. We're, we welcome you, whoever you may, whoever you may be, and wherever you are. Sure, you got that.
God, in your mercy, you have given me your son, who has laid down his life for me, so that I may have forgiveness for my sins. I praise your name. Psalm 32, 1 through 5, 
And this is King David speaking as he is praising the Lord because he realizes he's been forgiven in God's eyes. Psalm 32, 1 through 5. Blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord does not count against him, and in whose spirit is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me, my strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave me. You forgave the guilt of my sin. How many people, maybe there's someone here today that deals with guilt, deals with the consequences of sin that brings guilt into our lives and we just want that to be taken away from us, which it can be as we confess this sin to you and ask you to forgive us. Your promises are true, but they were to King David. They're true to us today as well. If we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, may you instill that in our hearts and our minds today as you set us free from guilt and shame. And that you bring to us a rejoicing, a happiness, a gladness that comes from no other place than from you. In your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. You know, I'm, I know you got a little bit of a uh, outline of sermon notes in your bulletin today. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna just do a real speed thing here. For those of you that like to fill in blanks, I'm just gonna tell you what those blanks are right now, and then just kind of come back. Okay? Are you ready? Here you go. Everyone wants to be. Happy. Yes, there you go. See, you filled in the right answer already there. Happiness is not something that you have in your hands. It is something you carry in your heart. heart. Very good. Through the years, I have met people who are not happy in their marriage, not happy with their job, and they're just plain not happy. They're looking for happiness in all the wrong places. All the wrong places. That's right. Yep. Psalm 32 gives the recipe to real happiness. I hope you saw that as you read it or as you hear it today, by the time we get done. 1A says, uh, don't sweep your sins under the, the rug. B, be honest and transparent. C, Confess and acknowledge your sin. Am I going too fast? Yeah. All right. I will slow that. Two. Psalm 32 is a testimony of someone who has, someone who tried to hide his sin. 2 Samuel 11 and 12, those are chapters 11 and 12 of 2 Samuel, gives a background to what takes place here in Psalm 32, as well as Psalm 51. Psalm 51 gives King David's admission. He admits to his sin that he did with whom? Very good, Bathsheba. And C, 2C, Psalm 32 gives us real happiness. You want to know what real happiness is? Conclusion, the root of 
King David's problem was blank. I'll get to that later. I'll do the conclusion at the end if I remember. If not, remind me. When it comes to real happiness, it's going to really come down to really your relationship to God. Your relationship to Jesus Christ. There's a lot of people who want to be happy today. We had our, we had our uh, granddaughter's birthday yesterday up in Minneapolis. She turned nine, and she had like about 20 presents. Way too many for any child. But she was happy because she couldn't, she just couldn't wait to open up her presents. And I wonder how she feels today. She's probably got happy, but it's not as happy as she was yesterday. And give her about six months from now, will she remember any of those gifts she got? Yeah, maybe a few. But give her five years from now, will she remember any of those gifts she got on her ninth birthday? Chances are, no. She may remember who was there, but as far as the gifts, probably not a lot. So happiness can be something that it can be very short-lived. But what we find here in the 32nd chapter with King David, we're talking about a happiness and a gladness, a way of rejoicing that we can have every day for the rest of our lives. And you know that your sin has been forgiven. That's real happiness. You know that you're right with God. That you know that you are ready for heaven. If you dropped over dead today, you know you're going to go to heaven. That's, that's great happiness. Not everybody has those kinds of, of assurances and, and that happiness. They don't like going to funerals. And they don't do a lot of different things. But we find in the scriptures... It's always happiness if you're right with God. It is always the gateway. It's an entering entrance point into an eternity with God forever and ever. You don't have to go through any of this crud and this junk that we have to go through here in this life and what we hear about all the time, what's going on. Happiness. I believe that you cannot just sweep your sins under a rug. But you need to be transparent and to be honest with them. You know, am I perfect in that regard? No. But I know that this is the right thing to do. To confess our sin, which, you know, these are things that sometimes we don't like to do. Communion is a great day to, to uh, spend that time of, of, like, it's like going getting a shower after you've been sweaty all day and you're feeling dirty and gunky. You, when you're done with communion, and you've been honest with God, and you ask for forgiveness and, and uh, received his forgiveness by receiving from him, what he gives to us with his body and his blood. We should leave here like, yoo-hoo, I'm clean. Whatever was bothering me, whatever I felt guilty about before, it's been covered. It's been dealt with. God has forgiven me. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing that is available to all of us. I have uh, dealt with, with people who come to my office, this is before I even came here, who said, Pastor, I'm just not happy. Can you help me? And I just kind of go like, <laughs> depends upon where you're coming from. You know, I have people say I'm not happy with my marriage. Well, I mean, have you talked to your husband? Have you talked to your wife? But sometimes like, no, well, maybe you should start there. But it's always like, let's get together so that the other person can hear where you're coming from. And if I can be of any help, I definitely will do that. Some people do not want to hear that they need to spend more time in God's word 
and to meditate on his word if they want to be happy. There are people who go to happy seminars, happy different places where people are going to congregate and get together and uh, buy a book that they'll never read from someone who says, this is how you can be happy in life. They go to all different kinds of places, and a lot of times many miles, and spend lots of money at a hotel and eating out just to hear somebody when really you find what to be happy. God's already given that to us in his word, the Bible. And it's usually where we have not adjusted our life to what God says. But we want to make God what we think he should be. And you don't find that in scripture. We need to adjust our life to what God says in his word if we want to experience his peace and his happiness. So Psalm 32, it is from a person who has been there, done that. He knows what he has done. Psalm 52 is his confession to God of his failure, moral failure. So if you read Psalm 52, you'll see David pouring out his heart. He's being transparent. He is being honest before God. And he says, Lord, don't take your Holy Spirit from me. He doesn't want to lose that relationship with God over the sin that he committed with Bathsheba. If you go to Samuel, 2 Samuel chapters 11 and 12, you will find that throughout that, if you read those two chapters, you will see over and over again where David failed. He is the king of Israel. The, the very first verse, I believe in chapter 11, it's like the kings usually go out with their army when it comes time to fight. But where is David when his army is out fighting? He's in Jerusalem by himself. And he wakes up during the night, or maybe he knows that he can see Bathsheba's taking a bath from his, from his palace, as he's noticed it before. You have to keep in mind that where David lived in Jerusalem, it is on a real it's a real valley type of thing that was made of a lot of houses. And so if you go out on your window, I mean, you easily could see the rooftops. If that's where people made it was on the rooftops. You could see people was going, going on there. And he saw that she was beautiful, and he asked her to come to his palace. And he got, you know, the authority of the king who wants to see me. Who am I that I should go to the king's palace? And, and she does, and one thing leads to another. And... Uh, David thinks he's done nothing wrong. He tries to cover it up, and he finds out that Bathsheba tells him that she's pregnant. So David starts to cover it. Knows that her husband is in his army. He calls his, sends word to his commanding officer, one of his generals, to say, you know, I need Uriah to come back here, uh, give him a little break from the war that's going on, and I just want to visit with him and and his whole plan is that Uriah would come back from battle and he would go home and spend time with his wife. And if she became pregnant during that time, no one would really pay any attention to it. They'd be like, well, yeah, he came back about that time and had, uh, uh, had some R&R &R time and uh, she became pregnant during that time. Well, Uriah came back and never went to his home to be with his wife. His loyalty to King David and to the army, to the men that are out there sleeping in their tents and away from home, he didn't think he should be given that kind of treatment. And so uh, David said, well, that didn't work. Uh, yes, one more night, he got him, kind of got him drunk. And said, well, now you should go home and sleep it off and go see your wife. We found out the next day that he did not go home, but he slept it off somewhere outside. And so then David says, well, this ain't working too well. I must write a letter to the general, give it to Uriah, and give it to the general, and so that's what he did. But inside that letter are the words
words that King David pinned down were the general was to put Uriah in a place where the fighting was the fiercest and where Uriah would definitely be killed. And that's what happened. Bathsheba mourns the loss of her husband. David consoles her. She has a baby by uh, has a son, a baby son who falls ill and dies. And uh, they have another son together. The son that they have is Solomon. becomes the wisest man. Which I'm not sure he gives so wise. <laughs> When you think of his life. But that's kind of the story that you find in, in 2 Samuel. A king, somebody who has everything he could ever want, and falls into sin. The good thing about David is this, is that he admitted it. He confessed it. After God had sent him the prophet Nathan, Nathan told him a little story about a little ewe lamb. Poor guy, just all he had was one lamb, a ewe lamb. And there was a rich man who had all kinds of sheep, and the rich man got in a visitor that came, and he was going to feed him, but he didn't want to use any of his sheep. But he knew his neighbor, the poor guy, just had that one ewe lamb, and so he made lamb chops out of that. He just got so mad, he goes, that guy should just hardened feather, hung by his toes. And Nathan said, you are the man. You took Uriah's wife. You took the you, the young lady. And so you are guilty. And all this time, David thought he covered it up quite well. God uses Nathan. And God says, I know everything about it. You need to confess your sin. And so that's really what we find in the book of 2 Samuel and in Psalm 51 is David's admission to admitting to his sin with Bathsheba and murdering her husband, Uriah. And Psalm 32 is the recipe for, for being forgiven. We all need forgiveness in our lives. Jesus even taught it in the Lord's Prayer. Forgive one another. Even those who have transgressed against us. Sometimes it's easier said than done, isn't it? But we all need forgiveness, and if we're going to be happy and experience real happiness, we need to know that that real happiness is going to come from God, not from somebody else, not from another human being, but in our relationship to God. And so David's problem, the root problem that King David had, is spiritual. It's a spiritual problem if a person is dealing with not being happy. And God would not let David forget his sin, and David was not happy until he knew that he was forgiven by God. And so I just come to the point here today of just saying, you know, is there any sin that you're trying to hide in your life today? Could it just possibly be that you've been struggling with being unhappy is because you just haven't done a, a self-evaluation of your life before God and say, God, this is where I've messed up. I'm sorry for saying this, or thinking this way, or doing this. I need your forgiveness. And that's really why we come really to communion. To confess. I need forgiveness. And we ask God to do that. Because only he can. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, 
there's a lot more that could be said about being happy, but we're talking about real happiness comes from knowing you, your son, Jesus Christ. And yes, it's true that there are some days that are not so good, and some days we aren't as happy as we know we should be. But we thank you today that you are the one, we acknowledge that you are the one who can only bring that into our lives. And Lord, we desire that kind of happiness that even when things around us are going bad, that within our hearts we say, I still rejoice, I'm still glad because I know that God is in control and I can trust him. And I know where I'm going because God in his word says that we place our faith in Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes unto the Father except through him. And so it's the faith we have in Jesus Christ that really brings us the real happiness that will not drift away from us. We may drift away from it. But God, your happiness is what we desire and what we want here today. We thank you, Lord, for everyone that you brought here to the church today, everyone that's listening in or watching the video of the service today. You are able to speak to every heart who's watching, listening, or who's here today and do a, a miraculous work of forgiving, replacing that forgiveness with the joy that comes from Christ. And so we thank you for this. Thank you that you love us more than what we can love ourselves. You love us more all the time. May that love grab us, hold us, and lead us each and every day. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Kind of reminded of happiness being a, what is it called? Caribou? Caribou cup? Put this on your cup. It says, may cause irrepressible happiness. <laughs> I saw the word happiness. I go like, oh, man. Apply that to today's sermon. Happiness is beyond what coffee can bring to you. Only God can bring you happiness. There is uh, communion here today. And uh, we're going to stand and recite the Apostles' Creed together. And I'll explain how we will do that this morning. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. In case you have never been here at a communion service before, and even if you have, you might have forgotten how we do it. But you will be uh, kind of an usher will come and kind of give you the nod, or or just you know. <laughs> you don't have to take communion if you don't want to. But if Jesus invites everyone to come to his table, 
and to receive from him what he'd like to give to us. So it's all about him, not about, about me. But if you do have a health issue where you can't walk or can't get up, uh, just you know we'll come and give, we'll come and make sure you get served. That uh, we'll bring it to you, just so you know that. You might have to just raise your hand at the end, type of a thing, or just saying you would like to give, but you don't want to come up, or you can't come up because of physical ailments. But uh, you'll find that when you come up, you'll just take your own uh, unleavened bread. Uh, there is wine and there's grape juice. You'll see by the color that's there. You take that by yourself as well and put your cup in the basket up here. So no one's touching anything but you. And then you can go and sit down. Or if you'd like to go up and uh, kneel at the railing, you can sure do that. And you can stay there as long as you want. And even if the service is over with, you're still up there, that's fine. And you can, you can do that. So uh, however you want to do that, what your need is today, we just want to make it a special time with you and, and the Lord today during this time of his coming to his table. So any questions? Okay. No questions. Let me move this to the side here. And uh, remind ourselves what happened and why we take communion. The Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So let's try to do it. You'd think I would learn this by now. Here's the bread. And Jesus broke it. It's hard to chew. Gave it to his disciples to eat. Reminded them that this is his body. He then took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he offered it to his disciples, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. I'll ask the pale arrows to come. Help with time.
hear the good news. Our crucified and risen Lord Jesus Christ, who has now given you his holy body and blood, through which he has made full satisfaction for all your sins. May he strengthen and preserve you in true faith unto everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Receive the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Towards you and give you peace.